In 2015 and 2017, Nvidia released ProShield TVs that have an inbuilt 500 GB mechanical drive. These units were significantly larger than the 2019 version. In this video, I will show you how I brought my bricked shield back to life. By bricked, I mean that the shield did not post at all. Please watch the entire video first before attempting, as there are important caveats you need to be aware of. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my 2017 Shield Pro that I bricked while flashing firmwares. With no original drive, I thought that hope was lost until I discovered an unbreaking method on XDA website. As you can see, the LED comes on upon plugging to power and then goes off. So we will have to remove the drive, format it and then write new firmware onto it. The shield is held together by clips that can easily be popped using a guitar pick. The backplate has no flex cables attached to it and comes completely off relatively easily. Before we remove the drive, if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to help the channel get to the monetization milestone of 1000 subs. I appreciate you. To remove the drive, I began by releasing the SATA ribbon cable from the motherboard followed by loosening the clip that holds the drive in place. You could use a 500 GB Samsung 870 EVO as well. This method will work for drives labeled as 500 GB not 512 or 496. Of course, you can make other drives work, but that will complicate the process. Once the drive was out, I used the SATA connector from an old drive caddy to connect the SSD to a Windows PC. I then downloaded Rufus, which is free, and used it to format the drive to GPT partition scheme and FAT32 file system. By default, Rufus only detects thumb drives. To make it see the SSD, I pressed Ctrl, Alt and F simultaneously. You have to be very careful to select the SSD and not one of your computer's internal or external drives, as formatting will wipe out all the data in the selected drive. While still on Windows, I downloaded the required files which I have linked in the description. I unzipped the start and end bin files and placed both of them in a single folder as shown. If you are keen, you may have noticed that my files are in a drive called EVO. This is not the same drive we are using in the shield. It just so happened that they are both Samsung EVOs. Our Nvidia Shield SSD has been renamed to 512GB by the Rufus software. My intention was to write the NVIDIA firmware onto the SSD using Linux environment. So I downloaded Linux Mint Cinnamon and used a free program called Etcher to flash the Linux ISO onto a thumb drive. After the bootable Linux thumb drive was ready, I turned off the PC remove the back panel and temporarily attach the NVIDIA SSD to a SATA connector. Probably, you could continue using the USB SATA connector for the next step, but this is the exact procedure I followed. With the SSD attached and the Linux bootable USB thumb drive plugged in, I fired up the PC while spamming F8 in order to access boot options. The boot option key varies from one PC manufacturer to another. In the UFI menu, I selected the USB option to boot directly from the USB. Next is the Linux boot menu, where I selected the first default option to start Linux Mint. 
This will not install Linux to your computer, but just live boot from the thumb drive. Once in the Linux desktop, I navigated to the folder where I copied the two bin files. I then right-clicked in the empty space of the folder and selected Open in Terminal. The terminal commands I used are on the text file on the right of the screen, which I have bundled up with the files linked in the description. It is just a copy-paste affair with one very minor change depending on the number of drives on your PC. The first command is sudo su, which grants us super user privileges to proceed with the next commands. The next command was fdisk-l, which listed all drives on my PC. From the list of drives, I identified the ID of my 500GB Samsung 860 EVO, which in this case is the storage device B, i.e. SDB. I then confirmed that the next commands in the text file had the correct drive reference SDB to make sure that I was writing to the correct drive. Please be careful on this and make sure you edit the command according to your listed drive ID. That is SDA, SDB, SDC, ETC. Simply change it on the command before applying. That said, I copied and entered the next command which took about 18 seconds to write the 7.9 GB file to the SSD. I finally copied and entered the last command which also wrote a file but smaller so it took only 2 seconds. After that, I turned off the PC and detached the SSD from the SATA connector so that I can put it back to the shield. If you are wondering, I put on the cloth tape to shield the crossing wires from the SSD when it becomes hot. By the way, this will be a good stage to reapply thermal compound on the shield. But since I did that recently, I went ahead to assemble the shield, being careful not to damage any of the cables. At this point, I remembered that I did not plug in the SATA flex cable. This is the moment of truth. If everything went well, the shield should now be able to boot. And as you can see, the shield now boots the NVIDIA logo and then the Android loading screen in a short moment. I let it sit there for about 10 minutes before proceeding to the next step. The next step requires ADB and fast boot drivers installed on the PC. I had that already set up as I demonstrated in this previous video. The link to that video is in the description. After about 10 minutes, I unplugged the power cable and connected the shield to the PC using the micro USB port. The aim is to boot into bootloader mode. With the micro USB and HDMI cable attached, I plugged in the power cable and as soon as the LED came on, I counted 3 seconds, then pressed and held the NVIDIA logo until it got into this bootloader screen. Once in bootloader mode and having a DB setup on the Windows PC, I navigated to the Platform Tools folder and by right-clicking on the empty space, I opened a PowerShell window. I then entered the command fastboot devices to be sure that my shield was being detected. The unique 20 digit confirms that the shield is being recognized. 
I then proceeded to open the NVIDIA firmware zip archive and copied the contents over to the platform tools folder. After that, I entered these first boot commands in succession, waiting for every command to finish before applying the next. After the last command, first boot reboot, the shield restarted and this time it successfully booted all the way to the welcome screen. That's it my friends, that's how I saved my shield from the landfill. Please note that there are shortcomings to this. The first one is that since widevine keys were completely lost when we formatted the disk, you will not be able to access high resolution streams from Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, etc. as your revived shield does not meet the necessary security requirements. Another important note is that you can only update your shield to Shield Experience 8.0. Any newer than this, you will break your unit again. I don't know why, but I tried two times and it failed. Thanks to this, I managed to record this third attempt. That's why the shield came on and went off immediately at the beginning of the video without posting anything. But initially, the SSD was completely blank. If you got insights from this video or find it interesting, please consider subscribing. I appreciate you all and cheers.